Hello, I'm Christopher Bayliss from Fast Growth Online. Thank you for downloading the workbook entitled Achieve a Lower Break-Even. Today, we're at the offices of Fast Growth Services, which is in Southern England. And I'm joined by Tim Bentel from Tim Bentel LLP. Thank you for giving up your precious time to come over here My uh, pleasure. and work with me. And in fact, we're going to be working on three of the workbooks on raising finance, uh, key performance indicators, and achieve a lower break even, all of which Tim has helped me co-create. Thank you for that, Tim. Before we start, Tim, can you just give us a brief summary of what Tim Bentel LLP mm. does? We specialise in providing strategic advice to owner-managed businesses with a particular focus on professional firms. Okay, well, and prior to that you were working for a very large firm of accountants in Britain. Uh, I think you were the manager, managing partner of, of that company. Indeed I was. I was the managing partner in Southampton, uh, quite a big office, and led the uh, firm and, and that office through a, a particular period of change, uh, facing a number of major decision points, so it was, it was around both leadership and, and managing the operational side of, of, the, uh, of the business. So Tim has worked with a number of smaller and medium-sized companies in southern England, but he's also, of course, a chartered accountant. So he brings the practical experience of those clients and his theoretical knowledge to these three workbooks. Indeed. So what is the purpose of this video interview? Well, one is to actually set the context of why break-even, achieving a low break-even is so important. Mm -hmm. And secondly, to give the viewer some valuable hints, okay, mm -hmm. on how to use it. So let's think about maybe some big companies where they've needed mm -hmm. to achieve a much lower break-even break in order to be competitive and also to improve their profitability. Mm -hmm. I think you know, Tim, that my passion is Portland Cement. I'd like to focus on one of those companies in that industry. It's a company called Blue Circle. Mm -hmm. And 20 years ago, it was the dominant player in Britain. And it had, and overseas as well, and it had 30 small cement factories here and else, elsewhere. Mm -hmm. However, it had a very high break-even point. And in order to become very competitive with other European manufacturers, over a 10 year period, it reduced its number of factories from 30 down to 10 mm. and dramatically pr drove up productivity mm. uh, and slashed its break even point. Thinking about it as a, as a model is that many businesses, I think you, you know that mm. if you take a year's time frame, they don't actually start making any profit until December. Mm. So January, February, March, etc. Days day. to profit, I think they call it, don't they? Days to profit. Days to profit, in this yeah. case, months to profit. Yeah, months to profit, yeah. So, you know, well into December before we make profit. Mm. That is a company with a very high break-even. Mm. On a shorter cycle, mm. it might be days in the week. Mm. It might be Friday midday before you get into profit. Mm. That is a very high break-even and a very unsatisfactory place to be. Mm. Make sense? Absolutely. And I know you use, use this thinking. Okay, what we're going to do now is to look at the workbook, a couple of pages, and I know you're going to illustrate some of the uh, pages with mm. some examples and also a visual aid. Mm. Is that okay? Absolutely. Yeah. So, Tim, if you could turn to page one and read the top of that page for our viewers, please. Certainly. To calculate your break even in sales, divide your fixed costs by your gross margin percentage. For example, if your fixed costs are 300,000 and your gross margin is 30%, then your break-even sales need to be 1 million. If your annual sales are 1.2 million, then your percentage break-even is 1 divided by 1.2 times 100% equals 83%. Okay, and there's a little calculation coming up just below that. Um, have you got a practical way of demonstrating that for our viewers, please, Tim? Well, I'll try this one, Christopher, because I, I like to keep things very, very simple. Mm. Uh, I've got a few blocks here. Um, on this side here, we've the smaller column. Uh, if you think of those as your fixed costs, so we've got three three blocks. That's your fixed cost, three hundred thousand, if you like, relating it back to the the paragraph that I, that I just read. 
Mm -hmm. On this side, we've got your sales. Mm -hmm. uh, the difference uh, between the two is the amount of profit that you need to generate from those sales to cover your fixed costs. Right. So if the sales are quite low, as they are in this instance, uh, then your, your, the margin you need to achieve on those sales to cover those costs needs to be very high. Mm. If you're in a business where the margin is typically not very high, then you need substantially more sales to mm. cover those fixed costs. Right. Uh, and in some, uh, some businesses, if you've got a bit, uh, 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 perhaps a foods a supermarket, mm. for, for example, mm. where the margins are very tight, tight. Yeah. and typically the fixed costs may be quite high, you need an enormous volume of sales mm. to provide sufficient margin mm. to cover those fixed costs. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. And I can think of examples of businesses that I'm working with or I have worked with, uh, motor dealerships. Indeed, uh, indeed. I like that. And, and those fixed costs, it's, it's very difficult to, to take away a fixed mm. cost. Mm. Uh, you might be able to shave a little bit, you know, get, the, get the scraper out, shave a little bit off those costs. Mm. Um, but costs, fixed costs typically come in in big steps. Mm. You might add another layer of fixed cost mm. on with your, uh, a new factory mm. or a new bit of plant and equipment. Mm. Uh, or in, in a in a in a labour intensive business, you might uh, you might um, bring in a, 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 some new, a new salespeople, for for example. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for that. Um, on this page one, then have a go at calculating your break even where it is currently. Okay. It's a very simple calculation. Just have a go at doing it. If you haven't got those those percentage gross margins or those fixed costs, go and find them out yeah. and do the calculation. And, and below that is a little table. Tim, talk us through that table, please. Yes, this table is uh, uh, hopefully going to be helpful. Um, assess your company by reference to your percentage break-even. And what this is saying is if your um, break-even point is less than 50%, then uh, that's great. Mm. Uh, between 50 and 60 percent, that's good. Um, 60 to 60 to 80 percent break even is, is quite common. That's mm. okay. Um, above 80 percent, then the business is 80 to 90 percent. It's vulnerable, and above 90 percent, you really are uh, in a territory where um, little minor things can uh, can can, uh, can uh, uh, topple the business over, be suicidal. Wow. So that company, that example we gave, is certainly in the vulnerable. It's certainly in the vulnerable area, position. Agency. So that's and that's a, that's a business that needs to to work mm. on bringing that percentage down. So when our viewers have done their calculation, where is your company currently, mm. and more importantly, where do you want to be in a couple of months' time, say six months' time or yeah. twelve months' time? Yeah. Most of them are fairly small businesses. Um, they're not giant cement companies, uh, so that the the speed of change is much faster. And it says at the bottom, when you've done uh, the workbook, come back to this page and redo it again. Okay, so that's the heart of this workbook is doing the calculation. So the second hint is generating your preferred options for reducing your fixed costs and also increasing your gross margin percentage. So on page 2A are a list that Tim and I have co-created for you uh, of fixed costs. Tim, can you just read a couple of those from the top there on page 2A? Yes, let's, let's take the first one. Reduce your office overhead costs. Um, let's take num number five, change to cheaper suppliers. Mm -hmm. um, number 11, reduce building costs. Mm -hmm. uh, number 18, uh, outsource everything and go fishing. Uh, uh, actually, outsour outsourcing is a way that many businesses have... have uh... <laughs> yes. Good. Okay, so there's 25 options for you there. Plenty of scope, really, isn't there? There's a lot of scope here. And what we're saying is, first of all, as the business leader, identify your maybe three options and write each one on a post-it. Uh, a small post-it in language which you understand and use. Make sense? 
It's a good list, actually. It, it is a very good list. And I think, as I was saying earlier on with, with these blocks here before I put that extra one in, that actually take it, reducing fixed costs, one tends to think, well, that's, how do we do that? That's, mm. just, not, that's just not possible because mm. they are fixed. So mm. how can we possibly reduce them? Mm. But actually, this is, a, this is a list of suggestions just to areas as, as to how you might do that, practical suggestions. Yes. So, so outsourcing is actually uh, a, quite a common way, uh, I find, that, that businesses uh, to go about that. And we talked about this company being very vulnerable. It's so vulnerable, the sales blocks are just about to collapse. So can yeah. we take these yes. down now? I'll take those, out. <laughs> take those out of the way. Okay. So on page 2B is a list of options for increasing your percentage gross margin. Tim, can you just select and read a couple there for us, please? Y yes, of course. Um, number one, increasing your sell selling price uh, is something which most people uh, find difficult to do, but actually that's probably the easiest thing to do, in my view. Mm. Uh, number nine, uh, improve your processes and efficiencies. Mm. Um, number 18, perhaps a longer term one, sell high margin products. Mm. Mm. And we have a workbook on that, of course. In indeed. Um, and number 23, reduce your cost of sales. Hmm. Okay. And similar to the previous page on the right hand side, having identified a couple that you think are very relevant to your business, assess your scale self on a scale one to 10, where one is, is low potential and 10 is outstanding potential. And the same on this page as well, identify a couple low potential high potential, because it's high potential ones we want. And as it says at the bottom, asterisk at least one of those uh, double asterisk mm. and write it on a post-it. And I think a practical point, Christopher, is don't worry about the how at this stage. Yeah. Uh, identify the ones where you think there is most potential. Mm. Um, and mm. the how comes later. Yeah, just get on with it. Mm. Which really leads us on to the third hint, just get on with it and do something. If you turn to page four, mm -hmm. so, You've identified your preferred option, first of all, in terms of fixed cost, and then the best option in terms of, of percentage gross margin. Put them there, put them there. And then what are your key actions to implement this action? Starting with a verb. Okay, and that is a very simple plan to achieve a lower break even. Uh, this can be a controversial subject, clearly. Um, certainly refine this plan with your, first of all yourself and other people, and then where appropriate engage your people, your key people in your plan. Okay, and that's it. Can I make one additional point that's occurred to me, and that's, um, I think it's very important when you're measuring uh, fixed costs particularly to be consistent about the measurement. Mm. So. Uh, what I mean by that is, if uh, don't don't change the underlying uh, basis of your fixed costs. Mm. If you start with s saying those costs, those all those ten costs are fixed, then stick with that. Yeah. Uh, you might be able to change them over time, but in terms of mm. being able to compare where you are now and the improvement, I think it's important to be consistent. Before we close, uh, can you just share uh, some experiences you've had by using this workbook with mm. your own clients? Yes, uh, I, certainly. I think it's um, what I found with, with my clients, two things in particular. One is it's been uh, a useful tool for uh, much more realistic budgeting. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 forecasting or budgeting is, a, is an area where many, many businesses have, have difficulty. Yeah. Because, uh, so this is, a, this is a very good place to... Uh, to start to, to do the break-even analysis, get that get that straight before you start the uh, the, the budgeting, and and the second uh, practical um, use which I think break-even analysis has in it, particularly in a small business, uh, is to help the owner manager understand their business risk. Yeah. Tim, thanks again for giving up your precious time, and good luck with the growth of your own business. <laughs>